My name's Steve Rowe, I'm on the Team Doctors of Edale Mountain Rescue Team and I'm a consultant anaesthetist and work with the Yorkshire Ambulance. This evening we're demonstrating the Autopulse, which is an automatic resuscitation device. It provides CPR to a casualty who's in cardiac arrest. In Mountain Rescue we use this in two scenarios. The primary scenario is deep hypothermic cardiac arrest, so it enables us to carry a patient off the hill with ongoing CPR if they require it. We also deploy them and use them for medical cardiac arrest, so people that have heart attacks on the hill. So hypothermia is a reduction of the core body temperature less than 35 degrees. Many of us feel cold when we're out walking. With the weather as it is at the moment, it's not unusual. But when you're unable to regulate your body temperature and the body temperature drops too low, it affects your circulation. The heart can go into arrhythmias, funny rhythms, and eventually stop. However, patients who are that severe can still be resuscitated. So hypothermia is a massive subject, but is at the core of what we do as a mountain rescuers. Many of our casualties are out on the hill and exposed. Simple things first, you know, protect from the environment, make sure they're off the ground, careful patient handling, identify how cold the patient is, and this can either be a measured temperature or use something like the revised Swiss scoring system, and then communicate that to control. That may show a need for deployment of the autopulse, People can be in severe hypothermia with no obvious vital signs, but still be capable of being resuscitated back to full neurological recovery. So the autopulse is contraindicated in paediatric casualties and if the patient has suffered traumatic injury, so a traumatic cardiac arrest. So there's a couple of big trials that were done, uh, one in the West Midlands, comparing automatic CPR devices and manual CPR. And interestingly, they found there was no difference to patient outcome. But clearly, if you've got four paramedics in the back of an ambulance, and that's what West Midlands used, was two ambulances crewed up, you've got four really well-trained people who it's their day job to do it. Um, and there are some safety implications with doing CPR in an ambulance. It's blinking hard. Whereas actually this takes that out of the equation. So you can say there was no benefit from using these. You can also turn that on its head and say there's no harm from using these. The, the outcome was no worse. And so what it does is it allows you to free up manpower, allows you to move the patient whilst you're doing CPR. And for me as a medic who you know, involved with lots of resuscitations, it turns it from a physical game where you're absolutely jiggered having doing rounds of CPR and then having to think into a mental game where I, I'm not physically knackered now because this is doing the CPR, so I've got time to think of all the reversible causes, all the medical treatments that I could do. For me, it's a really good way of offloading that, you know, giving you some cognitive bandwidth to deal with the situation. Autopulse is a great bit of kit. There's other automatic resuscitation devices out there. However, it costs about £10,000. Batteries last between 30 and 45 minutes, depending on the size of the casualty, and of course, the temperature outside will know that batteries suffer in cold weather. Weighs about 13 kilos, so it's a fairly decent load to carry up the hill, but by getting it there, you're actually freeing up team members to do other important jobs like carry the stretcher rather than provide CPR. The other thing that this is used for is a, what we call a bridge to ECMO, which is like heart-lung bypass. It's lung bypass, actually, but um, it's a way of taking the blood out, warming it up and giving it back. There are cases of people surviving deep hypothermia. The most recent case of that is the Lake District and uh, Keswick team and John Ferris is one of uh, my colleagues in the pre-hospital was their team doctor went to that fell runner who their companion left them they were confused hypothermic and in a bivy bag so the team thought they were going to pick up a cold person they got there he'd crawled out the bivy bag in his confusion was lying half naked on the fell and essentially in hypothermic cardiac arrest successfully resuscitated uh, spent a couple of weeks in hospital uh, and this was January, February this year just gone. Yeah, so we set off to do a recce of leg one. Up Blink after it is when I started like deteriorating quite badly because it was really cold. About two degrees temperature, minus 10 degrees wind chill. We have to cross a river at the bottom of uh, Blink after to get to the ascent of it and then because I did a basketball match the night before and I played at quite a high standard, so I was cramping up mega, like up the Glen Cafra, and I just started dropping to my knees and Max didn't know what was going on. He had to keep running up and down the mountain to keep warm. We started descending Glen Cafra. Max was going like 10 metres in front of me. 
telling me to come towards him. And then I was just sliding down on my ass, ripping all my ass open, leaving blood trails in the snow. Max was looking behind, almost crying. I was crying to him, saying, I'm going to die up here. And uh, then I just started tearing even more. I was saying to him, where's the light and where's the light? Because I could see the farm light. But my, my eyes were like going a bit blind at this point. That's like the deterioration of hypothermia. And uh, Max eventually got me off the ridge somehow. But coming down the ridge, I tried to stand up at one point and I fell 10 metres and did three tumbles. And luckily I didn't hit my head or anything. And uh, Max got me off the fell, uh, uh, the ridge, I'm sorry. Uh, and um, that's when my legs went stiff and I just was wedged in between these two rocks. He was like, just give me a hug and said, I'm going to go and get your help. Put me in my survival baby, but because he wasn't strong enough, he could only get it up to my hips. He couldn't actually get it fully over. And he left me in there, ran down, almost tripping himself, got to the farm at the bottom of Blencathra and uh, rung 999 and then Martin Rescue got to me within an hour and 15. Obviously, by the time that happened, when you get hypothermia, you get hot and you want to strip off. So I'd climbed out of the survival bivvy, down a little bit of the uh, Blencathra, about maybe 20 metres, and they'd found me face down in the snow, lifeless. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, the mountain rescue guy that got to me first, flipped me over and gave me three electric shocks on the defib, and my heart was in VF, so ventricular fibrillation, so it's like a little bit of a shiver under your heart. It's like, not good and then obviously the doctor got to me after 10 minutes of them getting to me and then they were doing five minutes on five minutes off cpr just to get blood circulation around my brain and then they were able to get me winched up into the helicopter luckily because of the weather was so bad it was 40 mile per hour winds minus 20 degree wind chill they winched me up doing the cpr put me on a mechanical cpr device and on the way to the newcastle royal victoria uh, my heart went flatline in the helicopter that's when they put me on ECMO when they got me to the Royal Victoria, which is a uh, takes over your function, your lungs and heart, and uh, circulates hot oxygenated blood inside your body and takes out the cold. And then once my body temperature got to 30 degrees, I was able to give me another electric shock and my heart started beating again by itself. And then they got me off ECMO. After 12 hours, I think, I was in a coma for four and a half days. And, uh, and that's when I woke up after four and a half days and uh, they did CT scans on me, everything looked fine, but they couldn't be sure until I woke up and talked to them. Luckily I'm here. Yeah, Martin Rescue, like, if they weren't a thing, they're all volunteers, it's like a charitable organisation. If they weren't a thing, I wouldn't be here today. Like, it's just like, puts into like, cons like perspective how important they are for like, people like us, like fell runners, even hikers and mountain bikers. Like, we need Martin Rescue just in case we get into the situations. You never think you're going to get into it, but if you do, you need them. Like, I never thought I'd need Remount and Rescue, but <laughs> I did. Like, my, my situation was pretty bad, and if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here. And uh, if they didn't have the protocols in place about hypothermia, proper like leading experts in that, them areas, they wouldn't know what to do with people that they found in them uh, situations and how to treat them. And if it wasn't for them, they wouldn't have known how to treat me because it doesn't happen in the UK very often, hypothermia. Uh, they wouldn't have known about ECMO, but luckily they've got the protocols in place and uh, it saved my life. And uh, I can't thank them enough.